Hey guys, this is Tyler here from Rehab to Fab. Um, I am working on these two French Provincial side tables. Um, my husband actually painted them in a color by Wise Owl called Abyss. And it is beautiful. It's a, um, a really dark, rich teal color that has a whole lot of depth in it. Um, we prepped them obviously first and um, got them ready. Painted them with that and then sealed them and then he powder glazed them. Um, if you're not familiar with powder glaze, it is a beautiful finish um, on furniture and cabinets. Um, it's a lot of work. You have to do a lot of prep. You have to paint. You have to seal it after you use a chalk basic paint um, with a couple of coats before you apply the powder glaze. And that's because if you don't, um, it will just grab it and it's not going to look right. Once um, you put it on, it goes on wet. And then once you put it on, it dries kind of to a powder. Um, and then you sand it off where you don't want it. So um, if you can see, let me lower it a little bit on the legs here. He left most of the powder glaze on, so they're a darker, more black color. And then in the details, like in the low spots, it sits in there. Um, and so you can kind of control um, where um, the glaze sits. He, we started out using um, a wet glaze. Um, we use general finishes a lot and we've used another brand. And we'll wipe it on and wipe it back and just kind of, you know, use your thumb to go across the detailed area so it sits in the low spots and whatnot. And he's really good at doing that. Um, but this, I don't know, powder glaze is just a whole new level. It's a gorgeous finish. Hadn't found anything else that looks similar to it. But it is a lot of work. Um, you do have to wear a respirator when you use it because like I say, when it dries, it dries as a, um, like a dust fine powder type stuff. And you sand it back off with sanding pads and it goes everywhere and your face will be black and your hands and your nose. And even with a respirator, you know, when you blow your nose later, you'll have black powder in it. So I don't think it's probably the healthiest product, but it does make a gorgeous finish um, if you're willing to do it. Um, but anyways, we picked these tables up and he painted them. We knew exactly what we wanted to do with them. They're just, they're beautiful. Um, and he finished up, he actually painted these and he finished them up and I opened them and I was like, oh, I don't know about that because you got this really pretty finish on the outside. It's got a great hair on the doors and you can see the brown behind it when you look in it. You can't really tell on camera as much, but I can see the brown wood, um, not just the brown wood, but it's also scratched and has some stain and uneven finish in it. And it just made me feel like they weren't finished. Um, like the outside's gorgeous and the inside's not, and it bothered me. So, um, I went to Hobby Lobby looking for some paper um, to put on them, and I found this print, which I really, really like, um, but they only had four of them, and it's going to take probably four with a little extra left over to do um, one table, and I have two, um, so I had to pick something else. So the next thing I picked up, also at Hobby Lobby, this is called um, the Paper Studio, and it's removable vinyl, um, meaning, you know, you can take it off later if you decide you want to change the look of it, and, you know, it should peel off pretty easily, but it should adhere and stay well. Um, it was $8.99 for a roll. I think I got it at like 40% off, so you can't beat that. There's six um, sheets of it in here. It's a 12 by 12 um size sheet and there's six of them in here and they had two of them so i bought both of them giving me a total of 12 and i thought if i can't finish the inside with that it's just not meant to be so i do um i love this pattern i love the colors of it i liked this one a little bit better it was just a little um i don't know it was just pretty to me um but i like this one as well it's got dark colors that's similar to the abyss um but i didn't have enough in this other one that i had first picked up so this is what we're going to do and I will tell you, I have never used this product before, so um, it's going to be a learning curve for me. But you don't grow if you don't learn and do new things, right? So, um, it may be painful, we'll see. We do use vinyl here at our workshop. We do um, DIY workshops where people come in and make signs and, um, and different things. Um, and we use vinyl for that, that we cut ourselves with a commercial cutter. Um, so, I'm assuming it's similar to that. It's... It's lined on the back and whatnot. It does feel a little thinner than what we're used to. So, again, I've never used this before. We're going to see how it does. Um, I did tell my husband to go ahead and paint the sides. I'm not going to do the sides in the back of the inside of this table because there's just no way it's too much. Um, so, the signs in the back right there and just a little bit over the edge here, he did go ahead and paint um, with the abyss um, just in case 
you know, any of the trim shows, and obviously the sides in the back of the show. So um, I'm going to start trying to lay this down, and we'll see how it goes. I'll try not to have my, my head and whatnot in the camera so much, but no promises because I can't see behind me. Um, the only thing I am kind of worried about with this, too, is I am a little bit OCD, and um, ideally, I could line these flowers up so that they're in the same place when I lay them down, and I don't think it's possible because it looks like I just turned this on all four corners, and none of them actually line up, so um, I'm probably just going to have to let that go because... I don't think it's going to be possible to line it up where it's actually a perfect smooth transition. I've got my radio playing in the background, and I feel like I need to turn it down because it's the last time we did a um, recorded video and tried to post it to YouTube, and there was music playing in the background. They blocked it because of the music. So hopefully they won't do the same thing. I like to have music playing, though, when I'm working. You think I should do the back furthest part of this first or um, in the front? Because i got to do like four pieces. I can't even get the pit back off of it. I'm struggling over here. There we go. So with vinyl, there's usually um, two layers. When we do it here at the store, we put tape over top of it also. So you have three layers. This one has two. And I did have it separated, but it just laid back down. There we go. So this backing on it here will peel off, and that's two pieces right there. You'll peel this off and then lay the actual sticker part down, uh, hopefully straight and smooth without any bubbles. I hope, I hope, I pray, because I don't want to have to peel off this adhesive. Don't mind my mess over there. Maybe I'm going to read the directions. Does it have? No, I'm not. There's not any. I was going to say maybe there's a trick to it. Let's see if it's different from ours. Usually when we do these, we'll peel the back off and then we use the top to center it and kind of peel it off a little bit at a time. But um, I don't know if I can do that with this. One. And um, so we would do like half of it at a time. But I don't know. This is thinner. See if I can do it without making it stick to itself. And I think I'm going to try to start in the back first if I can. And I do have this little tool here. This is what we use in our workshops. It's uh, just like a squeegee that you use to smooth stuff out and get the bubbles down. So I'm going to use it to press it down. One in so far. Um, I do think that there needs to be maybe a little bit more paint back here. I'm going to look through the lights and see. Yeah, just a little bit. So I am going to do that real quick. I'm going to get um, a paintbrush so I can add just a little bit more paint to the back of it. Okay, um, I just went and got, I'm just going to use a little sponge. We use these again in our um, DIY workshops for people when they paint signs. I'm just going to use that. 
to um, put just a tiny, look at this color. Can you see it? Good. It's pretty. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of paint in here on the back, just um, where I had, um, again, where I had my husband add some paint to the sides and the back of it to um, give us just a little overlap in case the paper didn't fit exactly. Um, and the reason I'm doing it in the back is because it's not a complete straight line across the back wall. It has two little corners on it, and I can't push the paper flush up against it without bending it and then having to cut that corner off, and I'm just, I'm not going to do all that. So I just stopped it where um, the wall is straight, and so there's just a little bit of the brown wedge showing uh, where the paint stops and the um, paper meets. So I'm just going to have a little bit of paint on that. Um, and I guess I'll work up here and then we'll go from there. I may dab it. I may not be able to get in here when I'm crawling. Okay. If you paint furniture, you know that um, you are really good at gilded poses. I'm not sure what the name of them are, but um, you learn how to be flexible and get yourself into crazy positions you wouldn't normally be in. Trying to get up under an inside furniture. <laughs> Luckily, I'm flexible. I'm also a little fluffy right now. Which makes it a little harder to bend without grunting. Me and my OCD, I told you about. You can't even really see the brown in there without my light, but when I shine my light in it, I can see it, and it bothers me. Terrible. Also, another thing that bothers me a lot of times, too, is like the underside of stuff, like when we do tables. Um, like up underneath the tops of them and stuff, if they're not painted or if it looks sloppy where we painted it, it really bothers me. And my husband thinks I'm crazy because I want to paint up under everything. But I just think if you do, it kind of sets you apart from other people that don't do it. It's always better to be neat, right? Um, I'm going to pause this for a minute so I can let that dry. Um, and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, um, I just used that sponge again to dab a little bit of paint in the back of this one. And also, I did the one beside it because it's in the same boat. Another thing I'm doing, um, so the inside of these, I don't think you can see it, but the inside of these have um, a little board where, I guess, this part is here. So it's not a straight line. And there's like a little corner of wood in it. So my paper is not going to line up flush. Um, and so it will stop right here, leaving the trim again right there. So I'm going to try to cover that if I can. Um, so what I did, I just took the measuring tape and I measured how far out it comes both ways. And I'm going to try, I hope not mess it up, to um, just cut the corner out here so I can slide it um, right in where it's supposed to be without um, having to leave a whole side um, down, the, down the side of each one of them exposed. I mean, if we just paint it there again, just because, just in case. Um, but I would like for it to be flush against that wall if I can. I'm not worried about the back so much. but So I just cut out that little corner right there. Um, and we'll see if it fits. And a little bit more. That moves my measurement a little bit. Good. 
Radio right now. So the YouTube blocks us. Okay, hey, there we go. That's better. Now the hard part on this is going to be getting it to play without messing it up where I have to slide it in that corner. And also apparently separating the two sheets. Okay. I do have a little bit of fingernails, but I can't even get it started. There we go. Peeling that off carefully. I think I got it. And then just using my squeegee again. And so again, the good thing I guess about this paper is it is removable. Um, it does stick like when I, when I first put it in. If I don't have it lined up, it is sticky. But it's not so sticky that you can't pull it back up. Um, so I was able to pick it up and move it um, when it didn't line up perfectly. Um, and then, like I say, if somebody decides they don't like it or they want to change the look later and put something else in it, all they have to do is peel it up. All right, guys. Two down and two to go. These back ones make me a little nervous. I could cut this. And I'm scared if I do it just a slight bit off. I'm going to mess up the whole sheet. I'm just trimming a little of this excess off on the side so there's not such a, so much of an overlap. These are um, shears that I got from like a floral place. They are so good. Cloth titanium. Um, you can use them to cut wire and stuff for like um, flowers and stuff. So they are super sharp. They make me a little bit nervous. A little bit clumsy. All right, so there's that. So we're gonna do. Yeah. We can do it, and then we'll get one left. So, two done on this one, two to go, and then we got to do again four more in the other side. And then these tables will officially be ready, and I can stage them. My husband finished painting them, I think, um, last week, 
so and they're so pretty and I was so excited to get them done and I didn't have hardware um, so I had to um, go to Hobby Lobby to get some I had one of these little it's a small glass um, black knob that I had gotten from Hobby Lobby for another piece and we didn't use it and so it just happened to be laying here and I tried it and it's a perfect fit because this door um, the trim on it here is pretty narrow so not just um, any piece of hardware will fit obviously because it would be too big and overlap so um, it fit perfect and then um, I was working on a Saturday just a little background I am a nurse so I work full-time at the hospital um, I work three days a week um, I'm scheduled for 12-hour shifts but I close the department so just whenever we finish is when I leave it's a very long day by the time you get up shower eat breakfast and go it's 18 hour days easily so I do that three days a week and then when I'm not at the hospital I'm here painting because I love it um, so Sundays are the only day um, my husband and I take off he's here at the shop Monday through Saturday um, so Sundays we take off and that's our catch-up day for you know laundry grocery shopping and everything and Hobby Lobby, unfortunately, is closed on Sundays, so we couldn't go get um, hardware, so I had to wait and go get it a couple days later um, during the week when I was off again. So I'm excited we've got those, and they look really good. It's a really good compliment to the piece. And then I found me some pretty paper to line. So I'm excited that these are almost done. And I've got a couple of other projects here in the shop that um, we've been working on that are almost done. I've got, um, we've got this Hollywood Regency um, style bedroom suit that my husband painted in Wazelle color petal. Um, that we, he finished up, I guess, what, like a week or two ago? And so we've been to get it done. Well, we've been cleaning the hardware for at least that long because it was it's old. I'm guessing it's from probably, I don't know, maybe the 70s and 60s. I'll, I'll show you a picture of it. It's, I'll be working on it. I'll hopefully get it staged this weekend. Um, but we were working on the hardware, which was very dirty, very, very dirty. Um, I cleaned it in TSP, and I took it home and boiled it in some um, water and vinegar a lot of times you know that will remove some of the gunk that's on them and it removed a good bit but they still had some on them so we scrubbed them um i cleaned them with brasso which took a lot more stuff off but then the brasso kind of left like a patina um type of uh, residue on it and so we needed to clean some more. So I took them home and I thought, well, I'll just bowl them again and hopefully that'll take off the leftover brass. So that was, it was just kind of sitting in the crevices and stuff that you could see. So I took them home and boiled them again, hoping it would just remove that, but that was it. But it made them, they looked kind of grungy again. So we had to completely start over and brasso them all again. Um, but they finally look pretty good. There's two of them that are a little bit darker than the rest. Um, but I think I'm just going to leave them. And the reason being, they're real brass. They're old. They're heavy. It's real metal. It's not plastic. It's not really thin. It's not cheap. And I just, I really kind of hate to, I thought about putting some gold buff or buff, buff and, what's it called? I forgot now. Rub and buff. Gold rub and buff on it. Um, but um, I just hate to because it's like real and solid and brass and I don't, I don't want to take away from the value of them. So I think I'm going to leave them like that. But um, So we had to do that for that set. Then, next hurdle was, because it's an old piece and, you know, it's been being used for years, there was um, all of the, um, it had little plastic pieces under the drawers that, um, like, hold the drawers in, like a drawer stop, because they don't have um, the same kind of slats as newer stuff. Um, and they were all broken, so we had to replace every single one of them. Well, the problem is when you have old furniture like that, you can't find the same stuff from the same manufacturer anymore because that's the time they're out of business. So I Googled, and I did find um, the company because, thankfully, the original ones had um, the company name on it and also a model number. And so I was able to look that up, and I found the company. 
and they don't make those pieces anymore. However, um, they did have a suggestion for one that was very similar that might work, and I was actually able to pick that up at Home, Link, Home Depot, surprisingly. Um, so we had to replace all of those. So finally now, those are ready to be staged. Um, I went to Hobby Lobby last week again when I got all this stuff, and I bought some stuff to stage it. So if you do furniture, you'll know you need good photos. Because anybody can paint furniture, anybody can slap paint on furniture, not everybody does it in a nice, clean, um, good way. And also, um, I forgot to cut my corner while I was talking. Um, but not everybody does it well. if you do, if you don't have good photos, you're really not going to get a whole lot of attention for your piece. So, um, you know, lots of people paint pretty close to furniture and, you know, you can have photos, but if you don't have good photos and, you know, they're kind of mediocre, people will just scroll right by it when they see it in a post. Um, but if you have good photos, they're going to stop and look more in detail. So if you want to sell, you really need good photos. And that's something that I've struggled with because we used to paint at home in the garage and I had no space to do photos. Uh, there was, you know, no lighting in the garage, and so I would take these in the house and try to get these photos there. Um, but I had, you know, just I didn't have a good clean spot. I didn't have any light walls because I have gray and dark gray walls. Um, and also, I didn't have good lighting, and I still don't really have good lighting. Um, but we do have a workshop here now. We rent a little space in a little old town close to where we live. And so um, my photos have gotten better. I would like more lighting. I didn't like my floors. These, this building has the old pine, original pine floors in it, uh, which would be okay if they were all uh, similar in finish, but they, I don't think they ever sealed them. So parts of them are worn down to just like the wood color, and then the other parts are orangey. Not really great for photographing. I'm struggling with this one. Um, so I got some little wood points from Home Depot. Those little clicky lock floors um, to try. And that's what I've taken my last few pieces of. So they're a little better, and I, you know, I try to go every time I go to Hobby Lobby. I try to pick up more stuff that I can use to stage, and it's expensive. And, it is crazy just like to get good photos but you know if it helps you to sell then it's worth it okay this one's driving me crazy i can't seem to get it to lay up against the wall here and the edge at the same time and i think it's because of my little corner because i forgot to cut it or i keep dropping it and it's sticking Cut a little bit more out of this corner right here. Hopefully, not too much.
always the last one that gives you the fits, right? Tiny little piece right there. That's just why I'm going to put you in and see it. I'm just going to leave it alone. That looks really pretty. Um, I'll take a photo and post them too on the website, but that's much better. Oh, I'm so excited about it. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. Um, I don't think I'm going to record for it because it's already been like a 30 minute video and they take forever to upload to YouTube. Um, so I'm not going to record. I'll finish this up and then I'll post. Um, I'll post in the bottom two um, in the comments what we used for it so you'll know and the link and if you guys are interested we do sell Wazel paint on our website at rehabtofabdesigns.com we would love to sell to you um, if you have any questions about the products you can let us know too and we'll be glad to answer but um, we are very happy with the paint we tried several different brands before we started um, to sell one here and use it exclusively in the shop and um, it's just a superior uh, product and they have fabulous colors which is very important to me so um, I'll post information on that and if you guys have any questions just post them in the comments thanks